Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's talk is given by Kevin Haysong Sheridan. A student at the New Haven Zen Center once asked Zen Master Sung San, you say that one must return to the mind of a child. Then what is the role of intelligence in spirituality? What is the role of intelligence in understanding Zen? What do you want right now? Zen Master Sung San replied. I want peace and quiet, said the student. Peace? What is peace? No turbulence, no movement, I guess. Yeah, that's not bad, Song San said. Peace is a very good word, but what does it exactly mean? What is true peace? Master Song San went on to explain, sometimes we use calculators. If there is already a number on the screen, you cannot make another calculation with the calculator. The answer will not come out right. So this is why there is a button marked C. If you push C, the screen becomes clear. It returns to zero. Then any kind of calculation is possible. If you keep a clear mind, then you will get happiness everywhere. This is complete peace, like a child's mind, holding nothing whatsoever. So always just push C. If a mind is angry, push C, and it will become clear. If your mind is sad, push C, and your mind will become clear. Don't know mind is push C mind. If you have a lot of thinking, only go straight. Don't know. Then your thinking will disappear. But when you do not return to zero mind from moment to moment, you cannot see the zoom verse as it is. If you are thinking, then even a mountain appears before you and you do not see this mountain. You only see your suffering thinking. If you keep a sad mind and hold your sad mind, then even a beautiful view appears, but you cannot perceive it. You're only following your thinking. So you lose this world from moment to moment. I always say when you are thinking, lose your eyes. Your eyes, you have eyes, but when you look at something with a mind full of thinking, you do not see that thing. Also, you do not hear completely, smell completely, taste completely, or feel. It's like a calculator where the numbers stay stuck on the screen. You cannot do any new calculations. This is why Zen teaches that you must return to your original mind from moment to moment. This is pushing C. We call this only don't know. Don't know mind means all things and thinking is cut off. When all thinking is cut off, mind is already empty. Empty mind is before thinking. Before thinking is your original mind. So if you use a calculator, first you must push C. And only zero appears. This is empty mind. Empty mind is very important because empty mind can do anything. One times zero equals zero. Two times zero equals zero. One thousand times zero equals zero. Mountain times zero equals zero. Anger times zero equals zero. Desire times zero equals zero. If your mind returns to zero, then everything is zero. Everything is empty, completely no hindrance. Then your empty mirror mind can reflect this universe just as it is. But this empty mind is not empty. We say empty, but it is not empty. You can see the sky. There is daytime sky and nighttime sky. Yes, the sky is just the sky. But the daytime sky is blue. The nighttime sky is dark. Right now, the sky over us here in the United States is blue, while the sky in Korea is dark at this hour. Why is this so? After all, the sky is the same. Who made the blue sky? Who made the dark sky? What is the sky original color? Who made that color? The answer is you did. The sky never said, I am blue. The sky never said, yeah. I am dark. You made that. But if you push your C button, only don't know, then there is no blue, no dark, everything just like this. When we see sky in the day, our empty mind reflects this blueness. When we see it at night, our mind reflects the darkness. That is all. In reflecting on this story, one might be reminded of the simplicity and clarity that Zen practice encourages. 
as Zen Master Song San illustrates with the metaphor of the calculator, our minds are often cluttered with thoughts, judgments, and emotions, just as a calculator screen can be filled with numbers from previous calculations. These accumulated thoughts can obscure our true nature, preventing us from perceiving reality as it is. In my own life, I found that the practice of returning to zero mind is essential. I can remember multiple times when I was faced with a significant personal challenge that seemed overwhelming. Some of those times were without a Zen practice and more recent ones while I have been practicing. In the earlier challenges, my mind was filled with worries and what if scenarios, making mind. Much like the cluttered calculator screen, no matter how much I thought about the problem, clarity seemed uh, elusive. More recently, it is only when I allow myself to push C to let go of my anxious thinking and I'm able to see the situation clearly and respond effectively. The act of pushing C or the clear button is not about denying or ignoring our thoughts and emotions, but about returning to a state of clarity where these thoughts and emotions no longer dominate our perception. And Zen, this is often referred to as returning to our original mind, or as Song San would say, don't know mind. A state before thinking, before judgments, before labels. It is in this state that we can experience the world as it truly is, unfiltered by our preconceptions and emotional reactions. When Song San says, when you are thinking, you lose your eyes, he is pointing to the fact that our thoughts can cloud our perception, making it difficult to see if that's what they really are. It resonates deeply with this teaching that we return moment by moment in this in receptivity. It is in this state that we can fully engage with the world around us, whether it be a mountain or a beautiful view, a difficult situation. By continuously returning to zero mind, we get the ability to experience life directly without the interference of our conditioned thoughts and emotions. This is where true peace resides, not in the absence of turbulence, but in the ability to be fully present with whatever arises. As lay novices and, and, and Buddhists, you know, it's important to emphasize that it is not about intellectual understanding but more about direct experience. The practice of returning to zero mind is something that we must be lived moment to moment. In doing so, we find that peace is not something to be sought after, but something that naturally arises when the mind is clear. As I go about my daily life, I try to notice when my mind becomes cluttered with thoughts and emotions, I gently remind my team, then I try to find 10 to 15 minutes or more, if possible, to simply allow myself a quiet, unthinking time. Easier said than done. You know, I know. Many people choose not to chant OM or, or listen to music or picture something serene. How you do it is not as important as the um, I remember Song San used to say, you could chant Coca-Cola if you choose, because it's not what you are saying, but what you're doing with your mind that counts. My particular practice is literally thinking of nothing. And yes, this takes time and practice to develop. However the path you choose, know that this is the heart of Zen practice, to see clearly, to live fully, and to be at peace with whatever life brings moment to moment. Thank you.